Hi, I'm William reporting for the Fun Robotics Network. I'm here at the Australia Nationals with Team 14380, the Blue Bot Builders. They were the winning alliance captain and Inspire Award winner. They were undefeated throughout the qualification and playoff matches. Learn about their active intake, that's do both samples and specimens. Learn about their transfer and hashtag slam down delivery. All on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com robots. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. When approaching the start of the season, what was your main strategies? Yeah, from the beginning of the season, we first thing we know we want to do is to be able to accommodate both sample and specimen in the same subsystem. That way we can work better with our alliance partner. And second is to have a faster cycle time possible to max out our points. So would you be able to showcase that it in taking both samples and specimens? Yep, so we're gonna do a sample first. Now I'll take. And now a specimen. So the transfer claw uh, holds on to both samples and specimens once they have been intaked. So I see that you have compliance on your, your intake. What, what was the purpose of that? Yeah, so the purpose of the compliance arm is to able to intake the samples and specimen in different in any basically any orientation so we know that in the submersible th that that the uh, samples can be aligned in any direction so we want to we want to uh, fix that was the so was there any accommodations that you had to make for the samples and specimens you because it, you were using the same subsystem the same system uh yes yeah, so we had to intake the samples or specimens like horizontally that was the only way we'd be able to do the specimens and the samples and also right here we see these we call these the flabsters we had to put these on our intake instead of a solid roof otherwise we wouldn't be able to pick up a specimen we'd get stuck so these are kind of compliant so the specimen if you give me a specimen please thank you when it comes in here it kind of gets trapped in here so we can move over to the high rung and then when we're ready, obviously this grabs it and then we'd pull it over. And it's able to come up through the top there because of those blind factors. You use an active intake with a motor. How did you how did you figure out the packaging of that of that motor with your intake? Um so the way we figured out the packaging of our motor with our intake is so last year we've suffered a lot of power draw issues. So this year we wanted to focus on that. So we've made the motor mounted on our center of mass, which is our pivot. And, and as you can see under there, so it's right in line with our pivot, which puts the least strain on our cams, which is also another method. And we've also, to, in, to save weight and also not power draw again, we've used internal 3D printed gears that counter rotate the force. So this is these, both of these, four compliant wheels here, um, they're all driven off of the same motor and with in hidden internal gears. I see that the, the, the intake pivots down. Can you explain how that works? Yes, yeah, so instead of actually pivoting the actual intake itself, we pivot these two cams underneath here. And so what this allows us to do is use minimal power when pivoting. So when we pivot down, if, oh, we're gonna pivot down like this, it, powered by gravity and at the bottom no power is actually needed to keep it at that position and same for when we pivot up it, the intake can just actually rest on these cams here so no power is needed to keep them up as well I, I also see that you have this server at, at the very back what what purpose does that serve that is the poop shoot so after we've intaked a sample or specimen we use this to determine or not determine but 
physically keep it in the intake or reject it and fire it out the back. So if we, the internal collar sensor here, if that detects it to be a desired sample, it'll keep this servo on and keep running the intake just to push it against that. And we're holding it until we're outtaking with the grip lock. Whereas if we did not want it, it was an opposite aligned sample. We can simply put this down and keep running the intake and it's fired out the back. That's why it's called the poop shoot. So moving on from your intake and your, your compliance, so it was really pre pretty cool. Would you be able to showcase your claw looks really, really strange. Would you be able to explain your design process behind that? Yep, so we call the claw the Grippler. And it is, we've made it as lightweight as possible. And its primary function, just take samples and specimens, transfer it and outtake it to either the high basket or high chamber. It's designed in such a way that it's as light as possible using carbon fiber, BBR small servo and as much 3D printing as we can. While still, oh sorry. Yeah, mounted on hollow carbon fiber tubes and pivoted by two B-bar, is that? Yeah, Axon Maxes. So we can pivot it out and do our hashtag slam down and for a super quick specimen delivery into the high chamber. Another in interesting component of the grip lock is that, could you put it out please? The pivot points of these two arms are placed uh, in line with where these rubber bits contact the inside of the sample or specimen so that if you tug on it, it doesn't apply any torque and so we're only using power once it's pulling up and down or just changing direction, not direction, position. There you go. Yippee. So yeah, how do you ensure that there's a clean transfer between the intake into your transfer system? Yeah, so that's actually what this uh, servo horn at the back here is for. And so um, we actually run our intake a little, uh, sl a slower version of our intake. So it's bumped up right against our transfer core. So the transfer is perfect every single time. And also our color sensor, um, we can use it to uh, detect when there is a sample inside. And finally, we also have a magnet sensor right here that can detect when the slides are fully in. And so once they are fully in, we know we can uh, properly uh, close the claw. So we always have a successful transfer. So yeah, thank you for explaining about your intake and transfer system. So I see that you've had a, a very fast and effective three second climb. Would you be able to explain that? that? Um, so yeah, the thought process behind our climb is we originally we went for a level three climb and we discovered that it uh, the engineering behind it and the, using our cost benefit analysis, it wasn't going to be worth sacrificing a lot of driver practice time. Practice time. So uh, we ended up settling for a level two ascent and it's it's very fast and if we can get those extra cycles at the end, that's why we've made it so fast. It gets us an extra cycle plus a hang. So yeah, how does uh, how do you move your, your, your hooked arms to it and how does that hang actually work from it? Yes, yeah, so we use servos uh, linked by a chain here to actually pivot up the arms. And then once that, once that has been pivoted, then we also raise these to get the slides out of the way for the hang. And then using a motor, we drive these hooks down the chain so then we can climb the, high, the low rung. And then we bring back the slides to make sure our center of mass is in the correct place. Is a so talking about the different odometry that you've used. What type of uh, yeah? What type of odometry do you use? Do you use the? I see that you've used an Otos and you have some of the Go Builder odometry wheels. Would you be able to explain your thought process behind that? Yeah. So at the start of the season, we actually really wanted to try our Otos, so that's what we went for. But we've had to swap it out because we found that it really depends on what field you're on, and it also depends on like so many other little factors, like if there's aluminium dust on the floor or anything like that can really throw it off. So we decided after our original competition to switch back to dead wheels here and they've worked quite well for us. Um, and actually just before I forget, um, just want to mention the Go Builder pinpoint that we've also tried and used throughout um, our season. And thank you so much for explaining this, uh, this awesome uh, robot. Congratulations again on the win at the Nationals. 
just such a such an awesome be beautiful blue robot just congratulations again and thank you so much for sharing this has been team 14380 the blue bot builders this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Studica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels with several new colors coming soon to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allows for positioning at multiple angles. Feel the Studica Robotics difference, and if you're in the USA, request a structure sample for your team at studica.com slash robots.